Hey, what's up? Usman here. Welcome to another episode of WCCF Bytes. This is Technology with an Accent. So NVIDIA just recently unveiled their brand new GDX 1000 series, basically the GDX 1070 and the GDX 1080. And both of these uh, GPUs are based on the Pascal architecture from NVIDIA, which is the 16 nanometer FinFET iteration of their architectures. And it is the first FinFET architecture uh, in NVIDIA's lineup. Now, the GDX 1070 and the GDX 1080 are both based on the GP104 core, which maxes out at 2560 CUDA cores for the GDX 1080. We have already seen some very impressive performance numbers and it has an absolutely insane amount of overclockability as NVIDIA puts it. Uh, in fact, the demo at, uh, at the DreamHack unveil was running at a cool 2.1 gigahertz on air, which is absolutely phenomenal considering you couldn't even hit that number on liquid cooled setups uh, for the past generation of 28 nanometer cards. Uh, so the question that remains is that now that we have seen the GDX 1070 and we have seen the GDX 1080, what's next? Now, what's next is obviously the GDX 1080 Ti. Now, keep in mind here, we're not sure what the card might be called. NVIDIA might decide to change the card, give it a new nomenclature. It might decide to give it the Titan branding. We don't know. But we do know that the next card that is going to be coming will not be based on the GP100 die. Now, uh, previously, uh, as it happened, was that like GM200 die, the GM200 die was based for the original Titan branding and it eventually trickled down to the 980 Ti as well. Unfortunately, this is not going to be the case here because uh, the GP100 die it focuses heavily on double precision. It actually has a 1 to 2 ratio of uh, FP32 to FP64 uh, units. So you have a full GP100 die has 3840 CUDA cores for the FP32 side and 1920 cores for the uh, double precision, which is FP64 side. Now, interestingly, the P100 accelerator that NVIDIA has already unveiled did not have the full GP100 die. It, in fact, it, 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 had, it had four SMs less. So instead of the 60 SM full GP100 die, it only had uh, 56 SMs. And uh, the, the interesting thing is that we believe that GP100 will not be trickling down into the gaming side of things anytime soon. However, that's not where the story ends. There is another die this time around here, which will be called the GP102 die. Now the GP102 die is what's going to be powering the GTX 1080 Ti or whatever NVIDIA decides to call it later on. And it's going to be, now this is something that our sources have told us. Uh, they're usually very, very tight lipped around these subjects, but they have told us that the GP102 die will be somewhere around exactly at the halfway point of between GP1, GP104 and the GP100. Now, Interestingly, uh, I believe they're talking about the die size here. So interestingly, uh, the GP100 maxes out at 610 millimeter square and the GP104 uh, maxes out at somewhere around 314 millimeter square. So you're looking, uh, you're looking at a die that is in the ballpark of around 460, 450 millimeter squares. And this makes sense because if you look at the power consumptions that's going to be increasing proportionally with the added cores, you're looking at an almost 1.5 gain and 1.5 gain times the GP104 power consumption, which is 180 watts equals roughly around 270 watts. So you, you, you're slightly above the power envelope and the power budget that's usually allotted to high end cards here, which is 250 watts. So um, a 460 millimeter die, if it has the DDR5X, will consume around 270 watts. If it has HBM2, which is going to start taping out later this year, it's going to consume right about exactly 250 watts. Now here's the thing. What about the CUDA core count? Now since uh, we don't need to waste any space on DP units, which which was uh, which was the case with the GP100, we can utilize some of the excess space to increasing our core count. Uh, basically the FP32 core count. However, the uh, accelerators like the Tesla P100 don't actually have ROPs. So uh, that's one payoff as well. So it's not a linear scale down towards uh, the GP102 levels. What we can do is however, we can proportionally scale the GP104 core count to the, to the estimated die size of the GP102, which is 460 millimeters square approximately. You're looking at a core count of around 3840 CUDA cores on the FP32 side. Now, this is a pretty huge number. You look, you're looking at a 50% increase over the GP104 in terms of raw performance numbers. And we've already seen how amazing the GP104 is in terms of overclockability. 
and uh, a 50 percent increase over the gp104 will will put this card as as is a card that can handle 4k 60 to on any game you throw at it it can literally handle 4k 60 on any game you throw at throw at it uh, uh the gp104 can also handle 4k 60 on most games but there are still some games that will tax it and bring it down the, uh, the, the 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 sweet the, the sweet spot of 60 frames per second the gp102 however will be able to cater to that very effectively now here's the thing the question remains whether it's going to be using gddr5x or hpm2 uh i think both of these are probable uh, and uh, we really don't have much information on that count here but like i mentioned before if it uses gddr5x then you're going to have to compromise on core count to get back to the to the power budget of 250 watts since 3840 CUDA cores roughly equal to 270 watts with GDDR5X. If, however, you use HBM2, you can fit 3840 CUDA cores within the power budget of 250 watts. Uh, so that's basically the baseline of what we can expect for the upcoming GDX 1080 Ti or the Titan brand or whatever Nvidia is going to call it. And Here's the thing, we don't actually know when it's going to land. Some sources say that it might be revealed alongside the GP106, which is the GDX 1060. It's going to be coming later this year, probably. Or some sources say that it will probably come later this year. Some some more sources say that it's NVIDIA is probably waiting for an AMD response to the situation before it actually starts, before it actually decides to do something about it. Um, all of these are equally likely, but uh, since NVIDIA just recently revealed a GTX 1080, I think it's going to be a little while before we see another flagship on the Pascal side of things. Uh, now, this, uh, something that's probably going to be a question in some of our viewers is that why doesn't NVIDIA take the GP100 Completely get rid of completely get rid of the FP sixty four units and utilize the entire six hundred and ten millimeter square die space for a very insanely powerful GDX ten eighty Ti or a Titan. Well, to answer that question, the thing is, uh, unfortunately, the we you get very very bad yields at the top of the line, which is six hundred and ten millimeter square. Uh, in fact, we the, the probably the reason why the Tesla P one hundred P one hundred has four SMs less than the full GP one hundred. The full GP100 has 60 SMs, remember, and uh, the P100 has 56 SMs. That's probably because of bad yields due to its very large die size. That's that's reason number one why Nvidia would probably not go with a full blown GDX 1080i die size. Uh, reason number two, and this one is more more relevant and more uh, I think uh, rational in my opinion, is the fact that uh, Nvidia really doesn't need to, nor does it want to uh, get, hand out a full blown die as of yet. Uh, we still have Volta architecture coming up later on and Nvidia will want to utilize a full blown uh, Pascal, uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, a 15, a 16 nanometer FinFET architecture for a full blown Volta core, uh, which would probably be around 600 millimeter square for the consumer variants as well. Um, if Nvidia chooses to do that now, uh, well, uh, like I said, it doesn't need to do that. People will gladly buy the 1080 Ti even at 450 millimeter square because of the insane amount of uh, performance increase that it offers over the GP104. Reason number three, uh, if NVIDIA does do that, uh, does go with the 610 millimeters die square for the 1080 Ti, the problem is it's going to blow way past the 250 watt power budget that is allotted to high-end cards. If it does choose to do that, then you're probably looking at uh, wattage that is above the 300 watt uh, mark. And since they are, they're focusing specifically on power efficiency this time around, I really don't see that happening. So uh, these are the three reasons why NVIDIA will probably not go with the full-blown P100 sized core and why it will probably go with what our sources are telling us as the halfway point between the GP104 and the GP100. Uh, so I think that about wraps up uh, the, the initial discussion on the GDX 1080 Ti and the GP102 core. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Uh, if, you, if you want to see more, you can hit subscribe. If you don't want to hit subscribe, that's perfectly fine too. Hey, it's a free country. Uh, thanks for watching again.